What if I told you that you could nuke an entire room while also severing, suppressing, weakening, while also gaining a tremendous amount of darkness and light energy for transcendence? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do that without using any getaway artists, stasis turrets, or the Helion buddy. So without wasting any of your time, let's get straight into the video. Now the main part of this build is Felwinter's Helm. And basically, when you do a powered melee or do a finisher, depending on the tier of enemy, it sends a blast of weaken and suppress to anything around you. This weakened effect is equivalent to tractor cannon, which is pretty dang good since everything's going to be blinded and weakened at the same time. Alongside that, we're going to be running one hands on along with a heavy scout and heavy finder. You're free to interchange the heavy finder and scout. I just like that because I like heavy ammo. Then for the gloves, you really just want heavy handed since you want to make orbs when you get the melee kills. Everything else is interchangeable, so feel free to do what you want. On the chest, also feel free to do what you want. I have charged up because I don't want an awkward amount of armor charges. Then for the boots, I really recommend running invigoration just to get melee charge when picking up an orb alongside stacks on stacks. The last slot is interchangeable. I'm choosing to run elemental charge just cause. For the bond, I really recommend running proximity ward for an overshield because sometimes you might be low when you go for the finisher and you need some extra protection. Then a reaper mod alongside special finisher if you choose to run double special setup. When it comes to the actual prismatic warlock class, I really recommend running needle storm which helps us get darkness debuffs alongside with woven mail. This is going to be really useful for the fragments I'm about to show you. Now for the abilities, I'm running Phoenix Dive just cause I think it's cool. And the main thing we're gonna be running is Arcane Needle. Basically, I'm just running this for the three charges and we're gonna show what we're using them for in just a second. Then realistically, you could run any grenade that you want alongside with Devour. If you don't know what Devour does, basically when you get an ability kill, it starts to get going. Then from there on, any kills that you get will give you grenade energy alongside with a chunk of health. Now with Arcane Needle, we're pairing this with Lightning Surge. This is the ability that allows us to not only nuke the room that we enter in, it also jolts them and applies the Weaken, as we remember that Felwinter's Helm not only applies Weaken from our finishers, but our powered melees. And now we have three charges of that. Moving on to the fragments, we're going to be running Facet of Courage, and this pairs well with the next one, Facet of Defining, since finishers create a detonation that either jolts, scorches, based on the super that you're running. We're running Needle Storm, so this puts a darkness debuff being severed on anyone around us on top of the weakened from Felwinter's Helm. If you don't know what Sever does, Sever makes it so that enemies hit by this do less damage to you, and we're already weakening that on top of that. And to even add another layer, Facet of Courage says our light abilities do more damage to darkness debuff targets. So if the people in the room aren't dead already, they should be after the next lightning surge. Now the next fragment is going to be Facet of Bravery, and this is because I'm running Wave Splitter and I like volatile rounds. Realistically, you could change this fragment with anything you like. For instance, Facet of Dawn to get Radiant off your melee hits. Next is Facet of Purpose, which gives us a survivability tool based on the super rerun. We're running Needle Storm, so we gain Woven Mail, which gives us a pretty chunky damage resist when we pick up an orb. Then we're going to be running Facet of Balance, just because when we get rapid light kills we're going to be gaining melee damage and we really like our melee for weapons i'm choosing to run the new gl called lost signal and this is an area denial frame grenade launcher and to my surprise when you get hits with this thing you gain a tremendous amount of darkness energy and that's honestly the main reason why i'm using this i'm running wave splitter because i like the gun and i like to pick up orbs as well and when you pick up the orb it not only does it reload the weapon it also suppresses with sustaining fire and does giga damage the heavy really doesn't matter just 
pick whatever the hell you want and then for the artifact i picked these three that are showing on the screen right now and you can use either expanding abyss shield crush or transference now the gameplay loop is really simple actually you can really engage with a grenade to get devour going or you can just go in balls deep and just do the lightning surge if you don't kill anything they should be low enough to finish her and you can keep the game going then you will gain some armor charges, use your specials, get special finisher off, and not only are you providing a weakened debuff for your team if you're playing in a team, you're getting a damage boost for yourself and getting a lot of survivability. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I was just tired of seeing the same Warlock build everywhere online, so I want to share something different for you guys. And if you guys played with the build and enjoyed it, feel free to share it with others and send them my way. And while you're at it, like the video and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any unique Destiny 2 builds. And with that being said, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Peace and love, baby.